What's up everybody? Welcome to Workshop 1776. I'm Jack. Tonight we're drinking Pyramid Outburst Imperial IPA. We're building this. Alright, so it has recently been brought to my attention that I have made several flags for this channel and most of them are telling you what not to do and not actually how to build one of these flags from start to finish. So that's what this is going to be. It just so happens that this flag is huge. Let's get started. Okay, so for this project, I'm using Select Pine from Home Depot. There are 13 stripes, obviously, and um, the top seven are the same length and the bottom six are also the same length. So um, what I'm doing here is setting up a stop block uh, on my miter saw. So what this does is it allows you to take your first piece and you take your time on it, measure it two or three times in my case, and then take your time setting it up and then cutting it. And then after I'm done cutting it, I measure it again and then I set up a stop block for where that piece was. Um, a stop block allows you to take your next piece and then just butt it up against the stop block and then um, allows you to make repeatable cuts with a chop saw or a miter saw. It ensures that each piece is the exact same length. All right, now I'm just doing the same thing for the, the bottom six, which is it's a little bit longer, obviously. I'm using a speed square for the stop block in this case, just because I know it's 90 degrees. All right, now all the pieces have been cut to length. Now I'm just laying them out to make sure that I like the, the proportions. And um, for this project, I decided to do something I've never done before, which is use um, dowels to join the wood. Dowels are basically um, these little pieces of wood, right, like this, and use this jig right here, which I broke, it's cracked, um, but basically, you drill a hole in the wood and then one half goes in one end of the wood and then the other half goes in the other end of the wood and that it also it stops them from sliding in this direction so when you glue them up because the glue is wet the wood has a tendency to slide on you the ends won't be square so these will stop that from happening once I was comfortable with using the jig I took all the stripes and I laid them down on the biggest flattest surface I had which is my floor and um, then I started making little tick marks um, where I was gonna place all the dowels. So what you wanna do with this is, as you put the wood together, just like this. You lay them down on something flat and then you make a mark and then another mark wherever you're gonna put your dowels. After you separated them, now you take the jig, you square it up to the edge, and there, is a, there are little tiny lines in here, I don't know if you can see it on here, but you, you line it up with the mark that you made, and then you do the same thing for the other piece. It's like that, whatever, I can't see the lines. That's basically, it. that's the idea. So after you've done that, you put the dowels in, which these already have dowels already pounded in all the way, but then they line up perfectly they line up perfectly, and then um, that way it'll stop the wood from, like I'm trying to move, I'm trying to slide them and it won't slide because the dowels are obviously stopping it. So that's the whole point of the dowels, <laughs> but it makes gluing big projects like this up way easier because it's a lot, it's less uh, stuff you have to worry about during the glue up, which is usually a pretty stressful event. Okay, so another point in performance for the dowel jig. If this is the route you're gonna go, um, what I would do is I would take the, the jig and I'd put it on the wood and then I would take a clamp and clamp, I would clamp the jig to the wood. I would also, in that same, using the same clamp, I would clamp it to my workbench. That way the jig's not sliding on the wood and the wood isn't sliding on the workbench and all you need to do is use one clamp. Um, makes life a lot easier and since you have to make so many of these holes, um, it it's a, a pretty tedious process. So that's the fastest way I can think to do it. If you guys have better ways to do it, let me know. Um, like I said, this is the first time I've used that. I've used this method. Um, I really liked it. It really helped with the glue up. So I'm gonna do it again. All right. So I once I got the um, once I got all of the holes drilled for the dowels, um, I needed to sand off all the pencil marks. Uh, just because after we do this, uh, we're gonna burn it and then stain it. And you don't want pencil marks on there when you're doing those things. <clears throat> so what I did is I took the um, 
I went to the end of the end grain of the wood and then I just numbered them 1 to 13 uh, from top to bottom. That way I know I could keep them in order. I'm using 220 grit here. Uh, like I said, I'm just taking the pencil marks off. Lining them all up. Uh, and then now I'm just using the burns matic propane torch um, that I've used in all of my other videos except for one. Okay, the key to burning these flags. Think of the propane torch as a paintbrush and then paint with the grain. Okay, so sanding after you burn it does three things. It takes down the color of all the charred wood. Uh, it's from like a, like a black um, to a, a really light brown which is what you want because it's a lot less contrast. Second thing it does is blend all of the brush strokes from the torch. You'll find that if you hover in one spot or uh, where you change directions, there'll be like dark blotches um, just because you spent more time on that area than you did when you're moving it. And sanding it kind of helps blend those things out. It's not so noticeable. The third thing it does is it removes all of the charred, like flaky wood. So when it comes time to stain or paint, uh, the paint or stain will adhere instead of just like fall right off. Okay, so for the flags I'm using, this is Minwax Water Base Wood Stain Clear Tint Base. So this is on the shelf and then you just take it to uh, the paint person in the paint department at Home Depot and then um, they have like 15 colors I think and then they just add acrylic paint to the clear tint base. This color is called Scarlet and the color I use for the Union, which is the exact same stuff. Uh, it's just a different color, it's called True Blue. Okay, um, one thing that's really important, if you're using this, because they add acrylic paint to it, it dries very quickly and it gets really gummy. So what I end up doing is I'll, I'll paint, I'll like paint it on with a foam brush or whatever you're using, um, and I'll only let it sit for like 30 seconds maximum before I wipe it off with a, you know, a paper towel or a shop rag or something like that, that's clean. Right now I'm just putting the dowels in and I'm just doing a dry fit right now. Since this is the first time I did it, I wanted to make sure that all the, the dowels are going to line up. Um, that's why I did a dry fit and um, it worked great. Everything, everything fit perfectly, I didn't have any problems. <clears throat> so now I'm just applying glue to the faces that we're going to join. Um, I recently in a video mentioned that you should go light on the glue when you're gluing up these flags because you don't want to have glue squeeze out and then damage like the red stain. Um, and a friend of mine reached out and told me that that is probably bad information so sorry. Um, what you should do is put a normal amount of glue on there which is moderate you don't need to put a ton on there um, but when you get the squeeze out use a an old chisel that you've kept sharp and then just scrape the chisel along the joint get rid of most of the glue and then you take a wet shop rag that's clean and then you just scrub the wood and um, you'll get rid of all the glue squeeze out and there won't be any um, you, you won't have any like leaking into your pre-stained stuff or burnt stuff so that's what you should do. Do that. Alright, so here I am just... The reason I had to rip down these pieces is because I was originally going to make the Union out of um, select pine from Home Depot still, but um, I got 1x6s instead of the 1x3s that I, usually, that I buy for the stripes. Um, I was going to just put three of them together because that would be the perfect... and then uh, trim off some of the excess uh, and that would be the right height for it. Um, but I forgot, because I'm dumb, that a 1x6 is not actually 1 inch by 6 inches. It's, the 6 inches is really 5 and a half inches. So I was short. So what I ended up doing was just making um, the union its own piece, but there's the same amount of stripes in the union as there are here. So I'm just ripping, I'm ripping these pieces down to the size, to the width of these pieces, that's it. The technique here is a little bit different because 
this is all gonna be one color, so we don't really need to, we don't need to sand it prior, we don't need to do any of that. It's actually better to make it one solid piece and then sand it because it, um, it gives it a more uniform look. Uh, I did the same thing, labeling, uh, just to make sure I had them all in the correct order. Drilled all the holes. The top piece of wood right there is called a call. It's basically a flat piece of wood with um, packing tape on one side. The packing tape's there so that the wood glue won't adhere to it, so you can clamp it in places and not have to worry about it attaching to the, um, to the squeeze out. Um, what the calls do is they help keep all of the panels flat. Um, I've mentioned this in some of the other videos I've made. But this was the end of the day and I was trying to clean up and I was rushing and I only put one on there. Um, ideally, I would have put one in the middle uh, and then one on the ends, like one on each end. So there would have been three total, uh, probably outside of the like clamps. Um, the reason for this is when I took it out of clamps the next morning, uh, there was quite a bit of bow um, because I, I put too much pressure from the clamps and I didn't have enough calls on there to keep it straight. So, don't do what I did. Put more calls on and don't put so much pressure on the clamps. Okay, so <laughs> my camera had an aneurysm. Uh, I was sanding all that down and then I stained it all and, um, and it didn't record any of me staining it or any of the engraving happening. I don't know what happened, so sorry. That's where we're, this is where we're at now. The Union Wins Engraved by a friend of mine. I've mentioned him in other videos. He has his own laser engraving company and he lives a few blocks from me and he lets me take my stuff to him. Um, so this was a custom Union. Um, that's a Navy warfare device that was engraved in front of the Union, in front of the stars. Um, I don't have any clamps that are big enough for this because that's five feet wide. Um, so I'm just using a ratchet strap. Um, the dowels are going to provide plenty of strength and uh, I didn't need to put a ton of pressure on, I didn't need a ton of clamping pressure so I'm just using a ratchet strap. Now I'm just marrying up this piece to this piece, marking out the slots, cut the same holes, or cut the same uh, holes for the dowels, put all the dowels in. I only use four, I probably should use five, but I just got them all lined up. And then I use the then I use the clamps to finish off joining them. I threw a couple extra clamps on there just to add, pre or add a more climbing pressure in the middle because I felt like there wasn't enough. I didn't want any gaps. And I'm actually using the, the drinking straw trick right there. You just take a drinking straw and um, run it along the joint and that helps with the squeeze out um, if you don't have a chisel, which I didn't. Not one that was sharp enough anyway. Okay, so there's a bit of an overhang because I measured poorly it's about a quarter of an inch so I'm just squaring it up so it looks like it's one solid piece I'm just using a jigsaw here uh, you could use anything circular saw you could use a handsaw for that and now I'm just erasing the pencil marks since I didn't really want to sand it For the edges, so I get that really rustic look, um, I'll hold it as, at a 45 degree angle to the edge, and I'll hold it there until um, I start seeing orange like embers, and that's when I move on to the next piece. It looks really charred. And then I just add a little more detail to the rest of the stripes.
All right, so now I just take a, um, a cloth and uh, wipe it down to make sure there's no sawdust or dirt or whatever. And then I use this uh, Rust-Oleum Crystal Clear Enamel. You guys, have, if you've seen any of my other videos, I talk about this all the time. This stuff's great. It's not very expensive. Um, it gives a really like glossy finish, uh, so it shines in the light, and it also helps protect against like damage. Um, all you need for this project, you definitely need a drill. Um, you don't have to use um, a jig like this, but like I said, it was like 20 bucks. Um, super useful, it made my life a lot easier when I was trying to glue it up. You can have the home store cut all of your uh, lengths. I'll post all that in the description so you can literally just print it off and take it to them and they can cut it. And, that, and that's it. The clamps, the, problem, the clamps and the drill for the joinery, I think that's it. You don't need a circular saw or a miter saw or any of that stuff. So yeah, really a, um, you need a drill. And um, if you're going to use a dowel, so you need to get this little dowel jig um, and then buy you know, plenty of these, plenty of the dowels. Well, that's it. Um, so this is video number five for Workshop 1776, and I posted one the other day, and I said we're at 200 subscribers. That was three days ago, and now we're at 250. So I don't. You guys are awesome. Um, we really appreciate it. Oh yeah. So beer review: Pyramid Outburst Imperial IPA. Good. I like it. Mm-hmm.